Good morning, everyone, or good afternoon, depending where you happen to be. Welcome to this particular edition of Smart List Trek, in which we'll be covering planning for life after Dynamics GP. Now, this is meant to be a fairly high level as a overview of what it is we need to do to plan uh, to move, you know, after. GP. Uh, if we've decided that, you know, GP uh, has served us well, it's been a great solution for 30 years, but uh, we're ready to move on uh, on to something else. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about today is planning for that move. Now, by way of agenda for today, actually by way of housekeeping first, uh, this is meant to be interactive. I'm here to answer questions that you might have. If you do have those questions or you have some comments you want to share, please feel free to throw them either into the questions section or the chat section of GoToWebinar. I have both open on another screen right now, and I will do my best to answer those questions as they come in or respond to the comments, I suppose, if you just have some wows that you want to share. All right, so what we're going to talk about today, we're going to touch on preparing our Dynamics GP connector. What does that mean? How do we get our data ready to be um, to be used beyond Dynamics GP? Um, we're going to talk about where do we want to keep historical data? That's a key question for any system conversion, not just GP to something else, but anything I'm using where I have to transition to another thing, what do I what do I do with that historical data? I don't want to just lose it, um, but it can be costly to import it. So what do we do in that case? We're going to talk about using custom lists to combine old data and new. Um, again, not an exhaustive training session on custom lists, but we'll talk about the key custom lists that play in and how you're going to use those. We're also going to talk about widgets and how we're exposing data to other solutions. Now, what I'm going to cover when we get to widgets is just widgets in general. So it doesn't matter if you're moving to an Acumatica or a Business Central or a NetSuite or what have you. Um, we're just going to talk about what are widgets and how do I expose them. I will be showing you widgets inside Business Central, but that's only because it's a simple one that I have. Uh, on my desktop. We could work with any of those other systems that we I just talked about. All right, and finally, we're going to talk about adding smart list functionality to other systems. So there's not a lot of systems on the market that have something like smart list. And uh, sometimes even if they have something similar, it's way more complex and not as fun to use. So we're going to talk about how you can give your users that fun experience they're used to from Dynamics GP um, with smart list, uh, except in their new solution. Um, and in fact, we'll, we'll make it even better than what they had, but you, you get my gist. All right, without further ado, let's talk about preparing your Dynamics GP connector. Now, a couple of things, I did mention this the last time I was talking about PopDoc as the next generation of SmartList. The first thing you're gonna need to do is connect to your Dynamics GP data uh, where it is, because you're gonna want, want to start preparing it. And frankly, your users could make use of PopDoc today in their Dynamics GP environment. Get them used to PopDoc so that when you move to the next solution, PopDoc isn't something they're just learning, it's something they already have in their heads and it's a familiar feel, that, that uh, warm blanket that makes them feel good about being in a new solution. Now, in order to get to your Dynamics GP data, you have three choices. Uh, one is you can expose your um, your current SQL Server through your firewall. Uh, we have two IP addresses that you can whitelist to make sure that the port that you open is available only to us as PopDoc. Um, so that's one choice. You also have this choice of using a gateway. Now, a gateway is going to, we've got full documentation and installation instructions for a GP gateway. And if you have any custom mm -hmm. SQL data out there, I mean, if you've been on GP for more than 10 minutes, you probably have a custom SQL database out there somewhere, which means you can also set up a SQL Server gateway so we can get access to that data as well. Okay, so both of those, again, I'm not going to dive into actually setting up those uh, connectors. We do have other training sessions where we covered that in detail, but um, those are two things that you probably, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you probably have to do right at the start uh, before you set up. 
Now, as far as the connector goes, um, I'm going to come in GP. I clicked on the hamburger here, and I'm going to drop it down and choose connectors. So if you haven't done so already, you would come through here. You would find Dynamics GP uh, as a connector. You can search for it up here, um, come in. And then these are the choices I talked about before. If I have a straight up SQL Server login where I exposed it through the interweb, um, I can choose that, or I can choose my gateway. There were two options when I installed my gateway, either basic, which is username and password, or token authentication. Again, the documentation really digs into that for you. But what you're doing here is when you give us your server, you're gonna tell us what is your system database called, your Dynamics database. Uh, not everybody calls it Dynamics anymore. And then how am I logging in? What's my user ID and password to get into there? Okay. Once I validate and click connect, uh, it's going to go through and create a number of lists for me, uh, really to get me started. So if you were using today in your GP environment to get your users used to it, within, I'm going to say about 15 minutes, you have a web-based application that's connecting to your GP data uh, with 90 some odd lists that your users can use right out of the box. It's pretty cool. All right. Now, once I am connected, let's talk about setting up our data, getting ready for the future. Okay. Now I mentioned we create about 94 lists for you out of the box. Okay, those lists are based on our experience with Dynamics GP. You know that E1's been around the GP space for a good long time, and you no, know, we're, we're used to it. We gave it some love. So, 94 lists out of the box, but you also have the ability to use this add list feature. And this is where I talk about kind of preparing your data. So, you've probably got a number of smart lists out there that you've built over the years using Smart List Builder or maybe a designer. Um, you know, you've probably got some custom SQL views out there because you've got a couple of savvy IT team members or even savvy accountants who have built uh, SQL Server views for yourself to use over the years. All of those can be accessed through the ad list. So in order for me to prepare for the future, I want to make sure I bring forward with me the useful past. Not all of the past, just the useful past. So I'm going to click on add lists here. And if you take a look, all of the different smart lists that we've created over the years are available for us here in this list. So I can literally click on a checkbox and click on add to bring in the smart list that I like, okay? So with each of these smart lists, uh, all of the ones that you've built that are custom, maybe you wanna also build some custom ones that are more designed for future use. Okay, I want to touch on using PopTalk for that in a second, but maybe I've got some custom data and it just makes sense to use Smart List Builder to build a smart list that pulls all of that data together into a single smart list. Okay, again, I check the box, I click on add, it becomes a source of data for me. Now, I mentioned the custom SQL views that you guys have, you have built over the years, you or your IT friends or your partners or whoever. I can again come in here and choose anything that's going to be a system database level or a company database level. Now, quick note on the company one. Many people over the years, because of GP's, I won't say limitations, but what the, the way that GP was designed was every company was built to be a unique company unto itself. And there wasn't a lot of thought about you know, multi-company reporting or anything like that. So folks like myself, many other partners over the years have built SQL Server views that brought data together from across multiple companies. PopDoc actually takes away that requirement. So PopDoc introduces this concept of multi-company. So if you do have a SQL Server view whose only purpose is to bring data from many companies into a single view, think about replacing that view instead putting a view within each of your company databases and then choosing, you know, whatever that view is called. I'll just choose this one for my example. 
and then clicking on display for all companies. Now what's going to happen is it's going to become a multi-company list in the same way that other PopDoc lists are multi-company in that I'll have a drop down at the top of the list and I can very quickly change between. Now your existing SQL view could still work if you really wanted it to. It just wouldn't work with that drop down that I'm talking about at the top. Your users would have to filter based on some field within your view. Um, like they probably already do inside of SmartList today. Um, but this one design consideration going forward is those multi-company lists or multi-company, depending where you live, will um, aren't necessary when it comes to PopDoc because we have built in that multi-company functionality for you already. Once I click on add, now I did one earlier, um, I brought in a extender smart list that we had you can see was brought in from smart list builder once you bring it in all of popdoc's functionality is here for you okay so i can choose what fields i want my users to see i can add popdoc calculated fields at this point if i wanted and i could even choose which default fields are going to be shown so all of those smart lists now can be brought in and exposed to my users and managed within PopDoc as well, okay? Including all the standard functionality that you've seen me do in many, many demos over the ages, uh, things like restricting my data. I can even add details if I want to. Um, those details, uh, for those who may not know what details are, allow us to expose related data to my users right within the same list, uh, very much like go-tos that you used to have inside of Smart List Builder. Well, Smart List in general. Okay, now when we're preparing our data for the future as well, we wanna think about our favorites, okay? So it's great to have all of this data at our fingertips and I can just leave that connector as it is going forward if I wanted to. But in a little while, we're gonna be talking about mixing our historical data with our ongoing data or presenting our historical data in a new system. And for that, maybe I wanna clean it up a little bit. So I can come into any of my lists. So here I've got a Dynamics GP list of customers. And you know maybe I only care about customers who have had a purchase within the past three years, for example. So I could put a filter in here that says, you know, the last purchase date um, is less than three years ago, whatever that filter is going to be. Now I can save that as a favorite right here. And maybe I'm going to name this favorite as, you know, historical data view one or you know, historical customers that I care about, whatever that favorite is going to be, okay? Because eventually this favorite is gonna be used to mesh with other systems. So I'm gonna include the columns that uh, matter for this new system. I'm gonna include, um, like I said, filters that just make the data relevant mm -hmm. um, so that we're not just looking at a hodgepodge of old data for, for old data's sake. We only want data we care about. Um, for those who didn't know what the what uh, I was talking about with my multi-company dropdown, this is the example here. So every list in PopDoc for, for Dynamics GP is designed to be a multi-company list, okay? And that's not just Dynamics GP, that's gonna be any system that you move to that has the concept of multiple companies or multiple entities. Uh, this is going to exist for that. Okay, so like I said, we're really, we're preparing our data for future use, making sure we're getting lists that people care about um, that are gonna be relevant when we go forward. Uh, again, we're not just creating data for the sake of creating data. So the next thing to talk about is where do we actually keep this data? Where does it live? So from our perspective, when it comes to Dynamics GP, there's really three main choices for what you can do with your data from a historical standpoint. You can leave it exactly where it is. So as I just showed you, we can have our SQL, our Dynamics GP connector connect directly to your SQL server when it's on-premise or if it's out on Azure already. So you could 
leave it where it is. The one big con there is now you still have a SQL Server to maintain going forward, even though probably the ERP that you're moving to is going to be cloud-based. Another option would be to move it to an Azure SQL Server database. So basically, this is just a hosted Azure um, SQL Server instance. You would literally move your databases for Dynamics GP up there. We would set up your Dynamics GP connector to connect to your data on Azure SQL instead of on on-premise SQL. Um, and then it has all the same functionality, except now it's out on the cloud. I don't have to maintain a SQL Server, uh, any hardware, or uh, well, I guess I do have to maintain software, but um, yeah, it's out on Azure in the cloud at that point. And then our third option, is an Azure Data Lake. Now, we're going to be doing a presentation on Thursday. My colleague, Chris Dew, is going to be talking about historical detail or historical data in detail. He'll be digging into each of these options uh, in detail and explaining how you would go about each. Um, the Azure Data Lake is a large storage option. Um, it's very inexpensive from a data storage standpoint. Uh, we do have the option of moving specific lists uh, up into your data lake, or we can move entire databases up into your data lake. So from a, where do I keep it? It's an inexpensive option to throw all of my historical data and just leave it there until I don't need it anymore. All three of these can be applied for the rest of what I'm gonna show you in this demo. Um, and again, we do, we do have that detailed uh, session coming up on how to do what I'm talking about. Um, for my money, if I'm moving to an online environment where most of what I want to do is going to be web-based, I'm going to be choosing either the Azure SQL or the Azure Data Lake uh, as my choice going forward. But again, all three are viable options for different reasons. Okay. So let's talk about combining my old data with my new data. And this relies on a feature in PopDoc called custom lists. Now, normally what I'm gonna do is go to the connector that is with my new solution. So whether it's Acumatica or Business Central or NetSuite or any of the others that we talked about, um, I'm gonna to go to that connector to create this custom list. Again, for my demo, I'm just using Business Central only because it's an easy one for me to use because I've got a bunch of things already set up there. So I'm gonna to go to my connector, whichever connector that is. I'm gonna to go to my lists and I'm gonna go all the way to the bottom to this custom list section, okay? And the custom list I care about the most for, for that concept of blending my data is going to be this merge list, okay? Now, from a planning standpoint, for a planning for the future, what I really need to do here is think about what data I'm trying to combine. So there's gonna be some research here. I'm gonna flip through this in about three and a half minutes and just explain the concepts. When you're doing this out in the wild, it's gonna take you a little bit of time because you're gonna to need to understand your data from your new solution, whatever that is, um, and understand how your old solution, Dynamics GP, fits into that system, okay? So I'm gonna to explain to you the concept so that you know how to actually plan um, this merge that we're talking about, what data we're going to blend. Okay, so I'm going to call mine um, transactions here. Okay, and we'll just put in a group called sales. All right, the important bit here is choosing which lists we're going to merge. So in my case, from my old Dynamics GP environment, I'm going to choose the list I want to blend. So maybe I want to do inventory transactions, for example. Okay, I'm going to choose the companies I want to include, and I'm going to add this list. Then we're going to go through and add our second list, in my case, Business Central. I'm going to choose inventory again, and I'm going to choose 
Hmm. We haven't exposed inventory journals yet. So I'm just going to choose this one for now because I'm showing you concepts and not details. So once I've chosen my old and my new list that I'm trying to combine here, the next thing is actually lining up the fields. And this is where I was talking about, I need to understand the data that I'm trying to combine. Okay, so I do need to take a look at my new system, figure out what fields I care about from that new system, and then I can map those backwards because we have to actually go through we have to actually go through and line up our fields. For example, here's my item number field from my GP environment. That's called item number. Okay, and from here, this environment, it is in Business Central, it's actually called item number as well today. Um, sometimes it's called no, depending what window you're on. So I have to actually match up my fields between my two so that I'm lining them up. The reason we, we map them out like this is sometimes the same data, and I'm making finger quotes, you can't see me, uh, exists in a field in each system that's called by a different name, customer number versus customer ID, for example, or um, item class versus item posting group. So we go through and we actually figure out which columns we want on this list and we map them field for fields on the list. Then we're gonna go through and obviously do all the other things we do in pop talk, like set up default fields and set up any restrictions, mm -hmm. stuff like that. Um, but the key point here from a planning perspective is understanding what my end goal is and understanding how both my new system and my Dynamics GP line up with each other for that goal. Um, probably someone's going to throw a question in here. Do I have a silver bullet that makes that wicked easy? Uh, I don't. Uh, it's really just a matter of figuring out uh, what data you need to see and then lining it up. Okay. Now, some of these other custom lists will apply uh, when I'm mixing and matching. For example, maybe I want to create a join list uh, because there are fields from my old system related to my customer that don't apply in my new system. So I want to blend those in. That's less common. Honestly, mostly it's a merge list. I want to see my serial lot number history. I want to see my customer sales history, my vendor purchase history, my GL account history. All of those things are going to be merge list activities. Okay. Um, one other thing that will help you in your conversion, just so you know, is a compare list. You could set up a compare list for all of your opening balance and um, your master record imports. So what a compare list will do is compare my one list to another list and it will look for items from the first list that either do or don't exist in my second list. So when I import all of my open AR, for example, maybe I wanna compare my closing AR from GP to my opening AR from Business Central and just make sure that they're the same. You know, there are paper ways that I can do that, but if you wanted to do something programmatic, the compare list is a good way to go. Okay. So the other thing I want to talk about is widgets. Now, I'm not going to get too much into the detail of creating widgets, but I want to show you some of the different ways we can use widgets within another system. Okay, so again, I'm going to use Business Central. This could work in Acumatica, NetSuite, any of those solutions that we've talked about for my future um, beyond GP. I want to jump into my customer's window here because this is one of the most common things is I want to see what my customer bought from me, but I don't want to import 20 years of history. So I'm going to jump over to Aaron Fitz here. We all should recognize Aaron Fitz. 25 years of great demos brought to you by Aaron Fitz purchasing fax machines and green phones. And if I scroll down, you're going to see Skippy is skipping here. 
Okay, now this is what we're calling a popdoc widget. And a popdoc widget is just basically taking any popdoc list that we've created and embedding it in my future solution. So I can embed these in obviously Business Central, but I can also embed these in Acumatica or NetSuite or Salesforce or CRM. So I can take my data that was GP, I can take my data that is my new solution, and I can embed it anywhere that I need to put it. Okay, now this particular list, the reason I wanted you to see it is, this is a combination of ongoing Business Central data, so my new system, and as I scroll down, you'll see that it switches to Dynamics GP data. So I'm actually blending on the screen my data, okay? And this is just a simple merge list like the one I just showed you how to create. I'm gonna go through and merge my um, old data with my new, and I'm going to embed that wherever my users need to look at it. Now we have that full functionality I talked about. I can filter my data. Um, and just in case you guys haven't seen a regular PopDoc demo, we can do way more than the four filters you're used to. We can do as many filters as you need and we can mix and match your ants and ors. Okay, so important functionality. We're basically bringing smart list to any window we want it to be on, which is pretty cool. Okay, now with the widgets, with this widget talk, I wanna also cover kind of the last thing that we wanted to cover from our agenda, and that's bringing smart list functionality to um, other users, okay, to other systems. Now to do that within our widget setup, so I'm gonna come here, I'm gonna click on developer, I'm gonna click on widgets, and so you all know there is full training on this available. Um, we've got lots of options for you to learn how to do these specific things. The one we're talking about today is going to be called a multi-list widget. Okay. Now within this widget, when I choose multiple lists, we're actually going to be able to build a menuing system in here so i can add groups which is basically folders within it and i can add lists to those groups and the end effect looks like this okay now the first list we're going to bring up here is a list of purchases from popdoc and again that smart list it's really more of smart view uh, it's really more of a smart view experience for those of you who haven't seen smart view um, but i can drag my columns around i can group for example based on my vendor i can add my columns i have my actions and go to's uh, that we've talked about so i could right click on this and if i had open this page i could go to that uh, filtering refreshing multi-company all of that is listed here but the cool thing about this multi-list widget is i can add data from multiple connectors so i've got the business in this case business central list uh, in your case it might be acumatica it might be netsuite it could be any of them um, that i can go to but i can also include data from my dynamics gp so i could you know go back to my customers on hold from gp or more importantly go to account transactions or sales transactions and start to analyze that data and again these lists could be a blend of old data with new. So when I go to my account transactions, for example, it could be including all of my history data, not just my ongoing data from Business Central. Okay, so this is an important way for you to both bring smart list to another solution is this multi list widget. Um, while at the same time exposing them to historical data. Now, I do have a question in the queue that uh, I would like to touch on. Uh, I was hoping that this webinar would touch on when GP was ending. Uh, can I provide more information? So GP right now doesn't have an official end date. In fact, Microsoft has extended support out to, I think, to, I want to say 2028 uh, is the current number. Um, and they're still releasing releases. Um, they're still on that uh, modern support cycle. They're not really adding 
uh, more, they haven't been adding a bunch of new features. They're really just cleaning up stuff here and there. Uh, it's really more of a, a social ending, if you will. So if you want to stay on GP, you can. There's nobody forcing you to get off uh, yet, uh, but there are good reasons to move off. Tools like Business Central is where Microsoft is spending their money. So Business Central or uh, FNO, both of which can work with PopDoc. Um, that's really where Microsoft is investing in the future. Uh, most of the world is moving to cloud-based solutions. Um, so you've got your NetSuite, your Acumaticas, your Intax all out there uh, online. So there's not a need to move. There's not a specific end date yet. Uh, but, um, you know, Microsoft is all about sunset and GP at this point. That said, as long as there is a GP and as long as people are still buying it, E1 Solutions will continue to support it. We have several products, Smart List Builder and Smart View, uh, Extender, uh, FlexiPost. We have a number of GP-based products and we'll continue to support those as long as there is a GP. All right. I've gotten through the agenda that we wanted to show, um, you know, the different things that we want you to think about as you start to plan your move from GP, um, the different things that, uh, the different features of PopDoc that specifically apply to that transition. As I mentioned on Thursday, we're gonna be getting into more of the nitty gritty on what to do with that historical data. So he'll cover, Chris will cover more in detail, uh, Azure SQL versus Azure Data Lakes. Um, if you do have any other questions, please feel free to throw them in the queue. Uh, otherwise, you know, at this point, I wanna thank you all for coming. Uh, it's uh, It's been fun talking to everyone throughout this whole series, and uh, it's been fun seeing, you know, how many people are getting out for each of them. All right, if you do come up with any questions, feel free to reach out to either your partner, your E1 Solutions account manager, uh, or you can just send an email to sales at e1solutions.com and we'll be happy to answer any questions that you come up with. All right, well, thank you everyone and have a great Tuesday, I believe it is.